It says we're live. I'm Joe Tarosian, and this is Ramview. Can you see me? Live from the Ram Cave, I'm Joe Tarosian, and this is Ramview. The 2024 edition on March the 25th, I'm throwing off. I don't have any video feed. Can you guys see my video feed? Let me know, please, whoever's out there. I got two viewers right now, but I can't see my video feed back at me. So let me know, and uh, we'll go from there. And if we have to reboot, we'll reboot. Well, the NFL did it. The NFL dropped banned the hip drop tackle. That is incredibly jejun. Yes, it is the stupidest thing you're ever going to hear, right? They banned the hip drop tackle. Uh, so, Tim Burns, you see me, right? You see me, Tim Burns? I hope so. Cool. I'm glad somebody sees me because I cannot see myself. So, um, yeah, they did. They dropped the hip drop. They banned the hip drop tackle. And... Uh, yeah, so you look at the NFL right now, right? And you're thinking, they don't have any competition. They got no one who's going to come against these guys and convince them to do something else or to innovate. Instead, they're going to, instead of evolve, they're going to devolve into something that eventually is going to look like seven on seven. Uh, if I'm the players union, I might go on strike for this. I'd walk out because of this, uh, because something uh, is not right here. You're not... You're taking away the livelihood of these players and you're making them, putting them in harm's way. They can't tackle these big guys anymore. And so, yeah. And it, what it reeks of, and I'm going to say something here. First, I'd like to thank the NFL owners for uh, for writing the opening to my show today. Um, but what it really does is uh, it reeks of, of educators. And I have, my daughter's a teacher. I appreciate teachers. I think Teachers who teach English are great at teaching English. I think teachers who teach science are great at teaching science. I think teachers who teach history are great at teaching history. I just don't think teachers who teach history are experts at sports. And what I mean by this is, is that uh, when I was uh, breaking in with the mid, when the mid was doing its stuff, and we covered 90% high school football, uh, generally when problems arise, it was because educators got involved in positions like admin as well as as well as uh, athletic directors. And they had this weird, they had no real sense of what sports were. And they would make these stupid rules and change things around, move boys varsity basketball games to 3.30 and girls varsity basketball games to 6.30 and 6 o'clock because they wanted to be fair and they didn't understand that no one was going to come to those girl games, right? Uh, just stuff like that. They're their own worst enemy. And this is what the NFL looks like. you got a bunch of guys that are owning these teams. Do they even know sports, right? Do they even understand uh, football? And so, yeah, I don't want to say I'm mad about this hip drop tackle. What I don't like about it is it reeks of what are you going to do about it? You're still going to watch, right? Uh, when you don't have competition, you can do stupid things. Think about this. We don't have reviews when blows go to the head of the quarterback or apparently go to the head of the quarterback, we can't review that, right? Um, they've never modified in my lifetime the archaic pass interference penalty. They can't figure that out, and you can't even review that. It's just subjective. And just in case fans think the game is about watching football and football players, we've seen in the last few years officials will throw flags taking place of penalties taking place on the other side of the field that have no bearing on the play. It's a sweep right and the boundary receiver on the far left and the boundary corner are tied up in, in a holding or whatever, has no bearing on the play. So we'll throw the flag for that. And then the ineligible receiver downfield calls. This is the one that's graded me for years. You know, there was a reason the players wear numbers 50 through 79. They're ineligible numbers, right? And if a player's one yard and one inch down the field, they're going to flag them. Now, if they run into the passing lanes, you know, if they're 20 yards downfield, I completely understand it. But we've seen these pass uh, illegal, ineligible receiver calls, right? And uh, all they do is mess up the game. And now we've got a hip drop tackle that 
is going to be impossible, fancy word here, impossible to adjudicate, impossible to determine. In the bang bang of the NFL, now you're asking an official to decide whether or not the player swiveled his hips, dropped his weight to make the tackle, right? You know, and they're all doing it in the name of safety, right? Uh, so a game that is inherently unsafe, inherently unsafe, what they're going to do is try to make it safer. And in the process, some believe even make it more dangerous. Can you guess how many flags are going to be thrown this coming season? And then someone's probably going to come out and say, well, we should review it. So now we're going to slow the game down when it doesn't have to be slowed down. This is what it officially reads. Article 18, hip drop tackle. It is a foul if a player uses the following technique to bring a runner to the ground. A, grabs the runner with both hands or wraps the runner with both arms and unweights himself by swiveling and dropping his hips and or lower body landing on and trapping the runner's legs at or below the knee. The penalty for a hip drop tackle, loss of 15 yards and an automatic first down. So now not only can you not use your hips to drop, but now you got to make sure you don't land on anybody, right? And how are you going to prevent that, right? How are you going to prevent how you land on somebody else, right? You know, are, are you Michael Jordan on the football field that you can contort your body to where you're not going to cause an injury? Uh, and, and again, how do you adjudicate it? How do you discern it, right? You only get this because you can go back on replay and see what took place. That's the only way you see it because the game is so fast and so bang, bang. It's unbelievable. I found, I found this tweet from, uh, or Twix, Twitter X, from Tony Dungy today. This is Tony Dungy. They made him a Hall of Famer. Just, it's Tony Dungy. I'm all for player safety, he says. We need to make the game as safe as possible. And I must admit, I don't know what a hip drop tackle is. Now, some people were taking shots at him, but other players today were online saying, there's no such thing as a hip, hip drop tackle. It's a tackle. Having played and coached defense, Dungy goes on, I can tell you there's only one way to make a tackle from behind without dropping your weight, which could be worse. You can't bring down a ball carrier who is running away from you without dropping your weight. If defensive players are penalized or fined for tackles from behind where they drop their weight after contact, it will lead to diving at legs, i.e. knees, which is going to have some very bad unintended consequences. Haven't we always learned that lesson where every good deed has about two unintended consequences, right? They talk about player safety, but we still have artificial turf. Think about that. We still have artificial turf, and it's clear someone's not listening to the players, right? Someone's not listening to the players. Obviously, also, um, someone's – the coaches – not the coaches. The coaches aren't listening. Coaches aren't saying enough. Uh, someone needs to go on strike for this because they're going to ruin their game. But here's the arrogance of it all, and I think that's what sets me off. There's no competition. Guys, I'm going to get to the questions here in a second. I'll move right to questions because – I kind of had a weird opening to the show, but there, there are no, um, these owners, I don't know. Someone's gotten in their ears says we got to play it safe. They're fearful of somebody doing something, talking bad about them. This is bad call Ripley, a really bad call. Okay, guys, I do apologize for my being thrown off here because my video is not coming back to me. So I can't see myself, but I can see your questions. Tim Burns, USA expat. Thank you so much. Tim Burns saw the Donald interview last night. That man is never coming back. Okay, I'll come back to that one. I want to get to the hip drop tackle. Anyone got that? Uh, USA expat. Owners who do not understand, thanks for the Georgia memory. <laughs> Laugh out loud. There we go. Uh, Steeler fan Rob in Missouri. Patrick Queen said, next it will be touch football. Yeah, I got into a conversation. It's going to be seven on seven four-way throws because, yeah, they're ruining the game. Um, Tim Burns, I'll come back to that. Uh, Steve Ramirez, they said on NFL radio that most of the hip drop uh, will receive more fines uh, Monday than flags on Sunday. Uh, I guess so, but sooner or later, aren't they going to pressure those refs? Either way, you're fining the players for doing their job. It's just unbelievable. Uh, 
Rob Sorge. Yes, it's turned into a participation trophy awards. Okay. Uh, okay, guys. Cool. We answered that a little bit. If you have more questions or stuff about things you want to talk about the hip drop tackle, I think it's a big deal. We'll get back to it. So this is Ram View brought to you by Kistler Law. Uh, injured in an auto accident, need help, got questions, call Kistler Law at 661 661- 206-6990. That's Kistler Law at 661-206-6990. And check out KistlerLawFirm.com. Kistler Law, they've been fighting for you since 92. And by Temple City Auto Repair. Having some auto issues, get yourself some John and Henry at TempleCityAutoRepair.com. And of course, by Granite Ridge Christian Camp, a place where your life can change. So the NFL is changing. Uh, a lot of stuff's from there. Again, how strong is the players' union, right? If the players went on strike to get rid of artificial turf, I'd support the players 100%. Uh, if they went on, if they just said, hey, man, we're not doing this, you're taking away our livelihood, especially if you're a defensive player. Why? Why are we even having defenses anymore if you just keep on punishing them? This is ridiculous. All right. Let's move on here. Uh, as noted here in the comments, uh, I believe it was um, – uh, I believe it was Tim Burns. Looks like Stetson's news from his old coach lit a fire under people, and it sounds like the Rams are keeping him. Yeah, I, I saw the article there that says the Rams' Stetson Bennett is set to return for offseason workouts. Uh, I like it. I'm happy for the kid. Uh, you know, he's drafted. He obviously had an issue. We know there was a DUI, I think, in Dallas after the two years ago after the um, Georgia won a championship. And I don't know. That's the only place that people have gone to. Maybe it's alcohol. No one's quite sure. But um, but yeah, let's. Uh, I wish him the best. I don't want anything bad to happen to him. If he wants to come in and he can be uh, the, the third quarterback, right? I'll still give him a shot on the practice squad. The Rams did spend. It's a quality pick for the Rams. Maybe not for others, but a fourth round pick, one twenty eight for the Rams is a quality pick, and it's a premium pick. And uh, so let's see what he's got as long as he's not the backup quarterback this year. I'll also say this in regards to Stetson Bennett. It wouldn't preclude me from drafting a Penix or a Knicks if either one of them were still at 52. If we're at number 52, I'm taking one of those quarterbacks. And I couldn't believe where I saw uh, P- Penix drop to 44 in one mock draft and Knicks to 47 in another mock draft recently. Uh, so good for the kid. Cool. But uh, um, yeah. We'll see what he can do. As long as he's not the backup quarterback. Uh, news came the Rams are going to decide to roll the dice on Ernest Jones. It was reported that the Rams won't sign Ernest Jones to an extension until his rookie contract expires at the end of this coming season. I get not wanting to pay for an off-ball linebacker, but Jones does a little bit of everything, including a rush the quarterback. He really showed off that skill this year. Uh, and at this point, he must be considered uh, uh, the leader of the defense without Aaron Donald. Uh, and uh, that we've, uh, you know, we just have to think about that is that if Aaron Donald's not back, then who's, who's the experienced leader, the spiritual leader of this team, it's gotta be Ernest Jones. And, uh, and so we'll see, it doesn't, it won't surprise me or anybody probably in the first 100, if the Rams take a linebacker, I definitely think that's something that will happen. Uh, the draft order made official for April is Rams have 11 picks, 19, 52, 83, 99. Those are their four picks in the first 100. And then they don't draft in the fourth round. Fifth round on, 154, 155, 189, 209, 213, 217, and then 254 in the seventh round. Okay. Tim Burns uh, brought up uh, Aaron Donald. Saw the Aaron Donald interview last night. That man is never coming back. Throw in the big retirement bonus, the full page ad. That guy is not coming out of retirement. Uh, Tim Burns also said, Erica Donald... Donald made it hard to listen to Aaron. I kept having to rewind. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see here. What else? Aaron Donald said, oh, this is Timber. said TJ Watt was snubbed for defensive player of the year multiple times. Shout out to Steeler fan Rob in Missouri. Uh, is Aaron calling TJ the goat by alluding uh, he should be a five to six time defensive player of the year? Okay. Someone has asked me before, not you, Mr. Burns. So don't take offense at what I'm about to say. Uh, but, um, Honestly, uh, <clears throat> I do have to say, uh, Aaron Donald who? Aaron Donald who? I know it sounds harsh, but I don't care. It was a pretty good interview. Love the guy. But all I was doing was searching for breadcrumbs to see if he's coming back, which I still think is a possibility. 
But with the draft, free agency, this Rams roster, and the entire league uh, talking, uh, to, the entire league to talk about, I'm not going to waste an episode repeating the accounts of Aaron Donald's greatness. It's true. It's out there, right? It's like saying the Beatles are the greatest band ever. We know this. So I just don't want to get back into Aaron Donald. I've got it in pencil. I'll put it in pen after the draft. But, uh, and again, this isn't a shot at you, Mr. Burns, but someone was, was asking me, what did you think? What did you think? And I just don't care, right? I, I, I just don't care right now. What I care about is what's happening now with the team. Uh, there's enough people to talk about that. And I'd prefer to just keep moving on with Rams business, NFL business, and finding out who is the guy that said, yeah, this is a good idea to stop the hip drop tackle. Okay, around the NFL and other places, Legereus Sneed traded from the Chiefs to Tennessee. Uh, the Titans acquire Sneed uh, in exchange for a third round pick in 2025 and a seventh round in 2024. Uh, and they signed him to a four-year contract extension uh, in four years, 76 rocks. I don't want to pay that for, for, a, for a corner, maybe unless it's Jalen Ramsey. Uh, but I thought he would end up, I thought they were just going to keep the band together in KC. But I think this is a good move for the Chiefs. Uh, the draft is deep. The Chiefs have a couple of picks. They got the 32nd and the 64th. Uh, they can still draft a cornerback at 32, uh, a high-rated cornerback. We've seen all of them, Kool-Aid McKinstry, Cooper DeGene. We've seen them all drop back Enos Rakestraw. We've seen them all drop back and go forward and drop back and go forward. So it's likely a corner would be available for the Chiefs at 32. And because of how deep this, this college draft is with receivers, uh, you know, we've seen mock drafts, four round mock drafts where 17 receivers go in the first 100, uh, 21 in the first four rounds. Uh, there's going to be somebody right there at 64, like a Romo Dunze or somebody for uh <laughs> For the Chiefs to get for um, for uh, for for Patrick Mahomes, and again, what does this also do? Takes them off the hook salary cap wise, creates more space. Yeah, <laughs> in the end, I want. I thought the Chiefs would want to keep him, and I th if they were in that, let's run it back the way it is right now mode. But that's a very proactive move, man. And uh, give the Chiefs credit, man. Give the Chiefs credit. Was it Beach, the GM there? Nice job. Really nice job. This news came over the weekend. Deion Sanders was saying that Shadur Sanders and maybe Travis Hunter would pull a, a John Elway or an Eli Manning and avoid playing if they're drafted someplace they don't want to go. Uh, and then I found this quote when I was looking up that story. I found this quote from Robert Griffin III. Um, the power shift is coming, so everyone needs to buckle up without the players. All of these sports leagues are nothing. This is the player empowerment age, and you're seeing it coming to the NFL. No, you're not. I, you know, the more, the more uh, um, Robert Griffin talks, man, he's brutal, right? He's just brutal. He, he just, please, dude, just shut up, right? He's just, he just looks dumb every time he talks. Uh, you know, that might be the case because everyone thinks the NBA model is the model. Uh, the NFL has the model, and you know what that is? When we're done with you, we're going to kick you to the street. They come and they go. They come and they go. We're going to kick you to the street and we're going to get somebody else that's cheaper. Look at what we're doing. Look what the NFL is doing right now. They've devalued safeties. They've devalued linebackers, middle linebackers. Uh, no one really wants to pay big money for a corner anymore. The good teams move off their corners. Legereus Sneed, the Rams, Jalen Ramsey, they'll move off of them. Uh, and uh, the only player on defense that really makes money is the guy that can get to the quarterback. And so they're just going to move on. Uh, running backs don't make any money, right? And receivers, I think the market is going to, the bubble is going to burst for the receivers because there's just so many receivers, right? Uh, and so to say, I'm going to play hardball, <laughs> play hardball, man, play hardball and see what happens. There's no competition for the NFL. The CFL is not an option. There's no USFL anymore to go to. There's no world football league. I'm talking the 70s world football league when they signed Zonka, Kick, and Warfield. There's no leagues like that that's going to sign these guys. And uh, guess what? The NFL has a monopoly. And uh, that's why you get the banning of the hip drop tackle. And that's why there's no <coughs> power shift coming where the players are going to dictate where they want to go. The Sanders guys and uh, Shadur and uh, and uh, what's his name, Travis Hunter, they're, they're dreaming. They're really dreaming. Okay, I'm Joe Tarosian, sports writer for 21 years. Uh, and uh, now I do Ram View. Thanks to the, our sponsors at Kistler Law. 
got off to a weird start today. Even now, I can't see myself. You guys could see me, which I'm really grateful for. Uh, I hope it's not going to work on the playback, probably, when people watch the show later. So I apologize for, for being discombobulated here. But I was a sports writer for 21 years, founding member at the mid. Uh, those guys are still in the room. They cover the Chargers, and I get to do Ramview, and I write books. My books are on Amazon. Type in Joe Tarosian. And uh, you'll find them there. Some of you have bought them. I really do appreciate it. I got a nice review from Mr. Burns and uh, Manuel bought one. I do appreciate that. Uh, that helps support the show. Uh, this allows me, this is the way I my side hustle because I'm a pastor of a small church in Burbank called Burbank Faith Nazarene. And you can find us right here on YouTube at Burbank Faith Virtual, as well as BurbankFaithVirtual.com, Burbank Faith Virtual on Facebook and all across social media. So happy to be here. Let's see if there's some more questions here. Um, uh, uh, Kiss the Law are the work injury attorneys. Uh, I know they're auto. I don't know if they do work. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. When my wife got smacked by a car back in December, some of you were watching that night. I was on the air and my wife got hit walking our dog. I didn't know who to call. And uh, fortunately, our sponsor, you know, I got in touch with him and uh, he uh, answered my questions. All right. Uh, Steve Ramirez, question is, would you trade up to 44 to get Penix? Uh, and depends, you know, uh, uh, that's a good question, Steve. Would you trade up to 44? That's a good question. You know, but all I have to give is some of my fifth rounders and sixth rounders. Yeah. If I can trade some of my fifth rounders and sixth rounders, I'd do it. Uh, I don't think the Rams <coughs> necessarily need 14 draft picks this year if they trade back a little bit and accumulate more. But, uh, you know, if I could trade something cheap and I really wanted him for the future, yeah. Um, it just depends on what the Rams are thinking right now. Uh, if they're thinking they're going to get three more years out of Stafford, then probably not. I think you'd rather have him fall to you. Uh, but, yeah, that's a good question, Steve. That's a really good question. USA expat. Uh, Sneed could not submit a mock draft this week. He needs the draft to actually start to know what he might do. Okay, that's true. Uh, I just don't think the Rams are going to move up in the first round. I think they're going to move back, uh, and it'll be interesting to see. Tim Burns, seeing we are the fifth highest spender at tight end, is a 12.6 rock hit. What we could we get uh, out of Higby? A couple of good games, a couple of clutch catches, and a ton of injuries. Thoughts? You know, Tim, that goes back to – the discussion when we extended um, Higby this season. Remember, I we were talking about why would we extend Higby, you know? And Higby's good. Higby's good. He's not great, and we're not going to see anything more out of him. The only thing we're seeing is that he's just a little more susceptible to injury. You know, although that hit he took in the playoffs was a tad bit of an outlier, but it is something that happens to players when you get older. And here's the thing, you know, someone has described it. The foot game of football – is a hundred percent injury. You, everyone will get hurt. And those, and if you don't have the catastrophic injury like Higby had, you, you've only, you know, as a pitcher has only so many throws in his arm or in his shoulder, there's only so many hits a body can take. And then you're done. See Earl Campbell, see even Eddie George, uh, see some of these guys that they're on top and then it just starts to wear them down. And there's only so much you can do. Yeah. I didn't like the extension, of Higby. And I got to believe that, you know, if he doesn't come back, I think Hunter Long is going to be toast if Higby looks like he can come back. Uh, and I think as time goes on, that that uh, tight end cost will come down to a more equitable place. But for right now, it is a little, little bit high. Um, Steeler fan Rob, if the, is it the competition committee that makes up these dumb rules? I just seen that they will be able to look at replay to see if there was a roughing the passer call. Did they change that? Did they finally change that, Steeler fan Rob? Somebody let me know. Was that finally changed to where they will review a roughing the passer call? It's about time. It should be. It should happen. These things are game changers, and we've seen, uh, you know, no forcible blow, and they're 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 throwing their flags, and it really is disrupting the game quite a bit. Uh, you know, if the NFL is doing it because it wants people to talk about it, they should take another look at its product. You know, we want to talk football. We don't want to talk refs and flags, right? Okay. Uh, getting to the other side of this here, guys, just keep throwing the questions out. If I missed any of them, let me know. I think I got most of them. Thank you for your patience today uh, in terms of my technical issue. Um, let's look at those linebackers. We talked about Ernest Jones. 
Uh, Ernest Jones right now is the rock of the Rams defense. Uh, he's 6'2", 230. He doesn't turn 25 until around Thanksgiving this year. So he's going into his fourth year, and he's barely – he's going to be playing most of this year at the age of 24. In his first three years, uh, according to the PFF rankings, he was 32 out of 86, 42 out of 81. And then the year after playing with Bobby Wagner, he jumps to 32 out, 13, 13 out of 82. The Rams got him third round, 104th overall, compensatory pick. I believe that was a, a, a Brad Holmes compensatory uh, out of South Carolina. And his snaps have gone up every year, 440, 723, 932 last year. Plus last year, we saw them use him. Uh, where he had five sacks and 33 quarterback pressures. Uh, before that, I think he had two sacks his rookie year, but I don't even think he had 20 combined pressures his first two years, all told. And so the idea of not signing him makes me a little bit nervous, but then it convinces me, you know, the Rams aren't going to be very careful about where they spend their money, right? And, uh, and so uh, they will be probably looking at a linebacker in that first 100. Who are the other linebackers on the roster? Well, think about this. Ernest Jones is a third-round pick. He was the 104th player taken in 2021 overall. After that, on this roster, the Rams have three undrafted free agent linebackers. Christian Roseboom, South Dakota State, career special teamer, still looks like a special teamer. He played 552 snaps last year. Again, he's kind of in that Michael Hoyt thing. At least Michael Hoyt can hold the edge against the run and can get to the quarterback a little bit. But we see Michael Hoyt. Uh, in coverage, and we realize it's the same thing with Christian Roseboom being on the field for 500 snaps. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is just too weak. Like the guy, made a really nice couple of nice tackles, especially in the playoff game. But um, yeah, we understand the Rams are on borrowed time there. They need to do something else. And the answer is likely not Jake Humble, an undrafted free agent, 6'1, 235. He only played 45 snaps last year, didn't play any defensive snaps his rookie year. And uh, he's the other guy right now listed <coughs> as the backup linebacker. And then one guy uh, he's an undrafted free agent out of Rutgers. The Rams signed him. He played one defensive snap with Tampa Bay in 2022, 6'2", 240. Uh, Ola Kunle uh, Fatukasi. Uh, and uh, if you haven't seen him play, neither have I. He hasn't been on the field for the Rams. But that's the Rams – linebacker room that's their off ball linebacker room and uh, so that tells you that the Rams might be needing to do something and this is a position that screams draft someone and the Rams have drafted guys uh, in this position but from this position on the field uh, but not very highly Jones a third rounder is the highest one in all of the less need uh, years from since 2012 he's never drafted a linebacker as high as he's drafted Ernest Jones in 2020, he drafted Clay Johnston, seventh round, 234 out of Baylor. Four teams in 38 games. His NFL career has been since then. He was going to be put on the Rams practice squad, but I think he had a connection in Carolina from his family. He took it, didn't work. He's bounced around ever since. In 2019, the Rams took Dakota Allen, seventh round, 251. He's still floating around the NFL. He's been with two other teams. He's appeared in 31 games. Dakota Allen was a uh, I think the first year of last chance you uh, before he transferred back out to Texas tech and uh, he was drafted in the seventh round by the Rams 2018, the Rams drafted Trayvon Howard seventh round 231 out of TSTCU. He was a converted safety. He appeared in 29 games for the Rams. He's been out of football since 2022, actually literally since 2021 because he didn't play much in 2022 in 2016, the Rams drafted Josh Forrest with a sixth round pick. He played in 12 games for the Rams and the Seahawks, and his career is over. Uh, Bryce Hager, Rams got some mileage out of him. He was with the team for about four seasons. Hager was a seventh-round pick out of Baylor, uh, five years with the Rams, one year with the Jets, appeared in 79 games, nothing spectacular. And in 2012, they drafted Aaron Brown, seventh round, uh, out of Hawaii, and he never played in the NFL. So literally the Rams have drafted six linebackers, other than Ernest Jones, uh, off-ball linebackers, seven of them, or six, five of them have been in the seventh round. One has been in the sixth. The Rams have not invested here. I got to believe this is the draft they do invest. All right. Word broke, uh, I think, on Friday that at the Michigan Pro Day, the Rams interviewed Carson Barnhart, Michigan lineman, played right tackle last year. He's a little versatile along the line, 6'5", 316. Uh, and they also interviewed Ricky Pearsall, wide receiver, Florida, 
uh, slot guy, not a burner, great hands, competitive guy. Um, but also it came out that they interviewed at Michigan uh, wide receiver Roman Wilson, cornerback uh, Mike Sandstrill, uh, I'm sorry, Sane Ristel. And uh, I saw good words about him earlier uh, on another blog. And then defensive end uh, Jalen Harrell. And so the Rams have uh, actually interviewed a few guys there, just names to keep an eye on. Uh, NFL Draft Network, I'm sorry. Yeah, Draft Network mock draft came out. And uh, I was uh, looking at this. Same thing, Bears, Caleb Williams, Taxkins, Jaden Daniels. You're seeing a lot of inversion between Jaden Daniels and Drake May these days. They go with the trade of J.J. McCarthy going uh, to the Vikings with a trade happening there uh, with the Cardinals. Uh, you have the, the, the Chargers taking Marvin Harrison Jr. at number five. Uh, Malik Neighbors going to, to Giants at six. Again, Joe Alt at number seven. You have the Cardinals moving up with the Falcons and taking Romo Dunze at number eight. Um, the Bears taking Jared Verse at number nine. Jets taking Talisi Fuagi at 10. Dallas Turner to the Falcons at 11. Brock Bowers to the Broncos at 12. Terry and Arnold to the Raiders at 13. Uh, Olu Fashino to, to the Saints. We were talking about that on Twitter today. We're seeing Fashino. The stock is kind of dropping a little bit. He was a top 10 guy, and he seems to be overtaken by uh, Talisi Fuaga. Uh, Colts, Quinion Marshall, Chop Robinson, a Tim Burns special. He's at number 16 to the Eagles because they talk about a trade between the Seahawks and the Eagles. Uh, Jaguars, uh, number 17, <coughs> Amarius Mims, Bengals, Brian Thomas. And they have the Rams at 19 taking Johnny Newton. And then the rest of it kind of plays out in similar fashion. Uh, Chiefs taking Keon Coleman at number 32, wide receiver. I thought it was interesting. We've now looked at 21 mock drafts. Six of them have the Rams taking Latu from UCLA, but three of them now, the next guy down most have uh, speculated the Rams would take is Jerzon or Johnny Newton from Illinois. And so he's been in three of them. I would expect a lot more with him and Byron Murphy <coughs> as we get into April and move closer to the draft. The interesting thing about this, uh, this two-round NFL uh, draft network uh, draft was in the second round, they had Kingsley uh, Sumatea, the BYU tackle, going to the Bolts. That makes sense. Uh, Marshawn Neeland, uh, favorite there of Manuel Correa, going to number 39 to the Panthers. Cooper DeJean, uh, or Dijon of Iowa, a Burns special, uh, at number 41 to the Packers. Penix to the Raiders at number 44. I'm wondering if, if uh, Steve Ramirez saw that one. At number 45, now this was interesting, number 45, Xavier Worthy, Going to the Saints. Do you remember the last mock draft we had with Chad Reuter of the NFL.com? Chad Reuter had the Chiefs moving up from 32 to number 19 with the Rams to draft Xavier Worthy. NFL Draft Network comes back today uh, or, or yesterday and says the Saints would take Xavier Worthy at number 45. Just goes to let you know they are all over the yard on this. There's just as much experts as you are. Okay. Some of them, fortunately, maybe are in the room. They're able to text a GM or a scout and get a little bit of inside information. But in their speculation, don't ever take a back seat, guys. Nothing's crazy, right? We just saw this huge wave. NFL.com. If I worked for NFL.com, people would say, oh, he's got credibility, right? If you work for you know NFL.com or ESPN, they'd say you've got credibility. And we've seen the whiffs and the swings that these guys take. So you don't ever have to take a back seat or let anyone talk trash at you or talk down to you. Xavier Worthy to the Saints at number 45. Adonai Mitchell, the other Texas receiver, going to the Colts at number 46. The Colts would be thrilled with Adonai, Adonai Mitchell at number 46. And this was the one. Bo Nix going to the Giants at number 47. Daniel Jeremiah, uh, I think it was uh, last week, I think it was Daniel Jeremiah, had Bo Nix going, I think, number 12 to the Denver Broncos, right? Says who? Says what? Huh? How does it, how do you figure all this? And then this one had draft because of probably the interview had the Rams take in the, the Michigan corner, Mike uh, Sainer style at number 52. Just wanted to throw that out there for you guys to, to listen to. All right. We're going to keep pressing on here because I want to get to the questions and uh, I promise I'll get there, guys. I want to do this date in history. Uh, and make sure we get it right. Was a stone All right, tomb, my man. Okay, March twenty fifth uh, on this date in history, 
uh, born is uh, Joe Corolla. No one remembers Joe Corolla. We remember Tom Mack coming to the Rams in the mid 60s, or maybe we don't remember, but we know of Hall of Famer Tom Mack. He was the left guard for years. The right guard was Joe Shabelli, who got there in 61, as did Charlie Cowan. And those guys played, all of them played into the mid 70s uh, through 74. I'm sorry, through 75, Cowan and Shabelli, and through uh, 78, Tom Mack, right? That's why the Rams offensive lines were so great. Uh, we remember a Hall of Famer named Bob Brown coming in and playing left tackle for the Rams in 69 and in 70. But a guy that's forgotten was a Pro Bowl left tackle for the Rams. His name was Joe Corolla. Today he turns 84. He was drafted by the Rams out of Notre Dame, second round, smaller league in those days, 16 overall in 1962. And he, 6'2", 265, which was good size for those days, he started at left tackle for the Rams from 1962 to 1968, starting 70 games, playing in 70. I'm sorry, playing in 97 games, starting 70. And he didn't miss a game from 1965 through 68. But in 68, he made the Pro Bowl, and the Rams took advantage of it and traded him to Philadelphia for future Hall of Famer Bob Brown and Jim Nettles, who was with the Rams through 72. Corolla started two years for the Eagles and then returned to the Rams in 1971 to play in 11 games as a backup. And he's completely forgotten. This guy was a steady performer for the Rams. After he was traded, he had been the left tackle. That's when Charlie Cowan moved from right tackle to left tackle because Bob Brown was a right tackle. And the Rams had an embarrassment of riches for 30 years of offensive linemen. And Joe Corolla was one of them. And it gets forgotten. He's kind of like the 60s version of John Williams in the 70s, right? And maybe the 80s version of Irv Pankey, right? You forget who these guys are, but they were solid contributors for almost each of them for almost a decade. And so wanted to remember Joe Corolla today. Lastly, I want to mention that he was also part of that Rams draft class in 1962. People talk about great draft classes, and I know it's pre-Super Bowl era, pre-common draft, but in the 1962 draft, the Rams took number two, Roman Gabriel, the number two overall. Number three overall was Merlin Olsen. And then number 16 was Corolla. Talk about a great draft to start with, right? And in those days, they'd go 19, 20 rounds, right? Uh, but in that draft, they also picked up USC fullback Ben Wilson, who had a nice career. They drafted and, of course, didn't keep longtime Cardinals kicker Jim Bakken. Anyone remember Jim Bakken? Straightaway kicker, longtime kicker for the for the Cardinals. He kicked through 1978 for the team. Uh, and then in the ninth round, this is an interesting story. If you're a Raider fan, they also took a defensive end from St. Augustine. Ninth round, uh, 100 and something overall. He was 6'5", 270. His name was Ike Lassiter. Steve Ramirez, you're, you're a little bit, little bit older than me. Anyone remember Ike Lassiter? He signed with the Broncos in the AFL, uh, but ended up after three seasons going to the Raiders. And from 1965 to 1969, he registered 61 and, a half, 61 and a half sacks for the Raiders. Of course, that's unofficial, uh, but he had a 17-sack season, I think a 15-sack season, a 10-sack season. Pretty amazing player. He passed away about 10 years ago, but... <clears throat> Almost like I didn't even know who this guy was. And so I thought it was worth mentioning that we remember Joe Corolla, that 1962 draft, and then some of these players from Ben Wilson, Jim Bakken, and, and of course, Ike Lassiter. Uh, on this date in 1983, Bob Waterfield died, Hall of Fame quarterback, quarterback from the 1945 and 1951 Rams. And of course, Red Phillips, he passed away in 2015, an excellent receiver for the Rams. You know, Waterfield was only 62 when he passed away. Red Phillips was 79. I've gone into Red Phillips before, uh, and uh, we'll do it again later. Uh, tomorrow, since we're not on the air, want to get this one in, March 26th. Marshall Falk retired as a Ram in 2007. Uh, significant signings. In 2018, the Rams on March 26th signed in Dominican Sioux. In 2021, they signed Deshaun Jackson. And uh, then this one. In 1985, on March 26th, don't get mad at me. It wasn't my fault. The Rams signed Dieter Brock. I don't know how you feel about Dieter Brock, but, you know, he was the only one that could overthrow, you know, Gaddafi, they said. Uh, Dieter Brock was 
a unique experience of pain and terror for Ram fans. There we go. We got that in there. Let's look at some of these uh, draft picks and see what we got here. I'm sorry, questions and see what we got. Tim Burns, Rice, wide receiver, USC is finally getting uh, on some Rams mock drafts. Good. Yeah. You know what? He's a nice receiver. You know, I don't know if I'd want him in the first 100, but he is a nice receiver. Um, let's see. Where are we at here? Blah, 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 blah. Tim Burns, Gene Upshaw just threw up. I hope so. I hope somebody up there is picking up the mantle. Uh, Rob Sorge, uh, this is Steeler fan Rob in Missouri. I just seen it on the NFL Network. So they are going to review uh, roughing the passer. That's that's good. That's great. Um, Tim Burns, can Stafford throw for 1,500 yards to Cup and Puka in the same season? As long as the NFL is not going to allow tackling, of course. Yeah, I truly believe he could, right? Because uh, the players are going to stay untouched, right? And, uh, you know, the only thing they have to worry about is pulling a Dre Greenlaw and popping a hamstring or popping an Achilles running onto the field. But uh, that was uh, that is uh, a possibility. If not 1,500 yards, they could each throw for 1,000. They could each get 1,000. You know, back in the days of Ellard and um, Flipper, I think both those guys went over 1,000 for the Rams. Uh, and because uh, I think it was, I, and I'll be corrected here. Everett threw for three. Bell ran for a thousand, and then I think both Flipper and uh, and Eller were over a thousand. And we know that happened in the Greatest Show on Turf era. Manuel Correa, Mac was a good friend of my uncle. Ooh, Tom Mac, really? That's pretty cool, man. That's that's really cool. I'd love to hear Tom Mac stories. Good for you, uh, Steve Ramirez. Looks like challenge rule was changed. Coaches get a third if at least one of his two challenges is one. Well, why would you mess with that? Why would you mess with that? You know, the only thing I would do in that regard is there's got to be some system that um, that doesn't just leave it in whoever's hands it in inside of two minutes. But other than that, um, why would they mess with that? Why do they mess major in the minor and minor in the major, right? And this hip drop tackle thing, I hope I'm so wrong on it. I am hope I'm just blowing it out of proportion. But, you know, it's just, ah, you know, people who don't understand football get in their hands on control of football. Welcome to college football, right? No one who understands the game should be uh, in position to change the game. And I think the owners got a lot of bread. They're in control. I get it. But uh, but I don't think they I don't think they do understand the game. And this is one case where you have to listen to the players. Now, you're going to scream and everyone's going to scream. Oh, no. You know, don't you care about the players? Yeah, I heard that when baseball changed all of its rules. But look how stupid baseball has gotten. Did you see um, uh, Francisco Lindor uh, on the on the steal? He caught the ball. And uh, because his ankle or his foot was in front of the bag, they called the runner safe, even though the 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 runner was clearly out. But because it, he had, I was apparently blocking the plate or blocking the second base bag. This is how ridiculous you got with with um, you've gotten with these uh, with these uh, reviewable things and and too much intrusion. Just because you got the technology doesn't mean you do it. But once you've done it, the genie's out of the bottle, right? Uh, you, you know, how many times now are we reviewing? You know, did he get his foot on the bag or did he come off the bag? Instead of just you know understanding in the vicinity, understanding that. He was there safe. The play is done. He's safe, right? But, you know, they've just kind of gone way too far in their intrusion into the game. And this is what's happening in the NFL. And someone better stand up. And I think the only ones that can stand up here, uh, you know, they might not have the power to con get contracts or change contracts. It's not the player empowerment that we're talking about, which Shadir Sanders and Travis Hunter, but as a union to say, you know what? Our defensive guys, you're taking away their livelihood. You're, you're hurting them. And Steve Ramirez said it, less flags on Sunday, but more uh, reviews on Monday leading to notifications from the league that you're being fined. Uh, and, and then what happens? Do we go Kareem Jackson here? Do we look at every little thing? And if a guy has two hip drop tackles in back-to-back -back weeks, do we start thinking about, well, he should be suspended? right? You're asking them to change the game. You don't want them hitting high, right? You don't want them hitting high. And that was my grievance when, uh, when, uh, for people were taking the cheap shots, calling the cheap shot or what Tyler Higby got hit with calling that a cheap shot. And what was the guy supposed to do? You know, he's the receiver is bigger. Kai Higby runs what? Six, six, two fifty five. If he goes high, he's getting fined and he's given up 15 yards, right? If he goes low, he can take him out, but 
if you're not perfect going low, you're going to get that knee. What's he supposed to do? And then how is he supposed to take down Tyler Higby, right? Does he does he go up to him and then spin around and drop his hips? You can't you can't ban uh, you can't make this game safe. <laughs> That's the charm of it. That's the respect this game engenders in all of us because you see these guys go out and put it all on the line, and uh, it's just a shame for people not doing this. I I really wish they would walk out. I think the players should do something here. I think they should make a statement. Uh, it's their livelihood. It's their dollars. Maybe the offensive players don't care, but if I'm Patrick Queen, uh, if I'm uh, some of these other guys, at some point they're going to legislate them right out of the game, and it's going to be shorts and shirts and seven-on-seven seven four ways. And the NFL thinks they can get away with it because there's no competition. We really need the Elon Musk types, the people that are not just billionaires, but bazillionaires to go start their own leagues and start in a league that's in competition with the NFL and say, oh, guess what? You get to play football here. It's not two hand touch or flag football. Uh, and, and we're going to, you know, again, major in the major and minor in the minor, not minor in the major. Right. And major in the minor. And so, yeah, I, I get a little fried on these things. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think we got it, guys. Any questions? Anyone have any questions out there? This is just blowing me away because I can't see myself at all, at all. I don't know what happened. I don't know what took place. But, uh, yeah, I can't see myself. And I can see you're out there. Uh, but that's where we're at. So, all right. If something changes overnight, we'll do a Ram View supplemental. And uh, please, guys, if you can hit the like button, the subscribe button. Uh, I, again, this is just a weird show today. I feel like I'm really out of it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, But if something else comes up, throw me a line and we'll talk. I appreciate you, Steve Ramirez, Tim Burns, USA Expat, Manuel, uh, Steeler fan Rob. Appreciate all you guys clicking on and everyone else that is out there. Thank you so much. Thank you for your support. And uh, I do, do appreciate it. Okay. Let's get out of here. Have a great day. Take care.